sample and hold is normaled. Uh, it is connected to the noise generator at this point. So uh, we don't have to put anything into it to get it to work. It has a level knob to control the level, the amount of sample and hold, and a rate to control the rate of the samples. So let's listen to where it's set right now. It is normal to set up to go into voltage controlled oscillator one. Let's listen to it. So basically you can hear the sample and hold is creating random pitches in oscillator one. And of course you can control the frequency of the sampling down here. You can control the amount down here. As you increase, the distances between the random samplings increase. You can control that same thing over here on the input going into the uh, oscillator. And um, if you want to, you can also run it into another oscillator and choose a different amount setting, which gives different intervals, which is fun. So we'll choose the sample and hold out, and we'll put it into, just for fun, the, this input on oscillator three. Those are tuned to fifth apart, so you can hear that there's a little difference. And if we want to, we can change the intervals. of sound and then if you wanted to be obnoxious you could run the sample and hold output uh, into the lag processor and then into oscillator 3 the lag processor is causing a lag for the sudden voltage changes which basically, instead of making it stair-stepped, it makes it into humps. And that sounds to us, as it's controlling this VCO3, basically is sort of like a portamento change between the, the frequency, the random uh, voltages that are controlling the pitch. So that's a cool effect, but let's not stop there. We also have the input here. Right now, the noise generator is normaled as the input of sample and hold, but we don't have to stop there. We can use, for example, the sine wave uh, on the low frequency setting as the input to the sample and hold, and the samples will be taken from that sine wave, and we get an effect like this. Now it sounds random again, but it sounds random because the waveform is going so fast that it's not it's no longer tracking the exact shape of the sine wave. Or you can go back to that very obvious stair step sound. Also, you can use the other waveforms to get the the shape of those waveforms. Here's the triangle.
and that's the saw wave. But you, you can hear some of the crazy effects that you get by using the waveform uh, as the sampling pattern. And that's using sampling, sample and hold to control um, pitch. But of course, you can use it to control anything. For example, we can use it to control the filter. And then we can bring in the low frequency oscillator to really mess it up. Um, the other good thing about the sample and hold is that we get the internal clock for the sample and hold that we can draw on, which is a square wave that we can use as a modulation source to anything we want while we're using the sample and hold or not. For example, um, here are, here's VCO1 getting the sample and hold treatment. And now I'm using the internal clock out from the sample and hold, uh, which is just simply an on off on off going into oscillator three. And like I have shown you or will show you, you can take the internal clock out, put it through the lag um, generator, and then it suddenly is a roughly a kind of vaguely sine wave shaped thing. So basically you have a square wave LFO to do with what you will coming out of the sample and hold and you can be using the sample and hold at the same time. You can also use like the square wave from oscillator 2 as the external clock in that controls the frequency of the sample and hold. I don't know why you do that, but let's just see what happens. As I increase the frequency, it increases the speed of the sample and hold. And on top of that, we also have an electronic switch that is controlled by the sample and hold. The electronic switch is basically you can take two different waveforms, put them into A and B of the electronic switch. I'm putting in triangle and saw, and then take the output and put that in somewhere. Let's say this right here. And it will switch back and forth between the A and the B input at the speed designated by the sample and hold. So, you can hear it switching back and forth between triangle and saw. And you could do that with any waveforms or control voltages or anything you want. You can reverse it and have, like, say, the sawtooth waveform from oscillator 2 uh, being input into two different places wherever you would ever want to direct one thing to two different places alternating at the speed of the sample and hold. And that's the sample and hold. Thank you.